Students extend their understanding of multiplication and division when they have opportunities to apply these operations to solve a variety of problem types. By engaging with a variety of problem types, they attach deeper meaning to the operations and develop increasingly sophisticated approaches to problem solving. This video explains a common classification for multiplication and division word problems based on the book Children's Mathematics. This chart depicts the different problem types for multiplication and division. It may be applied to whole numbers, fractions, and decimals. There are two sets of criteria for categorizing multiplication and division problem types. First is the location of the unknown. So are we finding the number of groups, the size of each group, or the total or product? Identifying what we are solving for will help us decide how to solve the problem. For example, Dina has four packs of candies. How many candies does she have? Well, we know the number of groups is four, and we know the size of each group is three candies. We just don't know the total amount. This can be seen as a multiplication problem. Here's another example. Miguel has 12 candies. If he puts an equal amount in each of his four bags for his four friends, how many candies will be in each bag? Now here, we know the total amount or the product, and we know the number of groups, we just don't know the group size. So this can either be seen as a multiplication problem with an unknown factor, or as a division problem. Here's one more problem. Lainey has 12 candies. If he gives three candies to each friend, how many friends will get candies? Well, again, we know the product or the total. This time we know the size of the groups. Each person will get three candies. We just don't know the number of groups or the number of people who will receive candies. This problem, again, could be seen as a multiplication problem with an unknown factor or as a division problem. We can further categorize word problems by deciding if the problem involves equal groups, arrays or an area, or a comparison. For example, we might be looking at equal groups of wheels on bikes, as in four bikes with two wheels each, or equal lengths of ribbons, as in I have 12 inches of ribbon. If I cut three inch lengths, how many lengths will I cut? An array problem might be one where we are finding the total number of desks in equal rows, or determining how many desks are in each equal row. An example of an area problem might be about a plot of land with an area of 32 acres. If we know one side length, we'd be looking to find the other side length. With equal groups, arrays, and area, we are considering one total amount. A total amount of candy, a total amount of desks, a total amount of land. Comparison problems are different. Here we are looking at two distinct amounts and making a multiplicative comparison. For example, Fred's mode of transportation has twice as many wheels as Frank's. If Fred has four wheels, how many wheels does Frank have? Or, Farmer Tony has 36 acres of land. Farmer Penny's land is seven times larger than Tony's. How many acres of land does Penny have? Multiplicative comparison problems are typically introduced in the fourth grade. The purpose of having categories of problems isn't for students to be able to categorize the problems they solve. Rather, it's for us as teachers to make sure we are allowing our students to solve many different types of word problems. With that said, students should be able to articulate what is known and what they are trying to find. This will help them decide on an approach for problem solving. Be sure that students solve problems in ways that make sense to them. It is not necessary to immediately connect an equation to a word problem. Instead, it is more important for students to apply sense-making to reason through the problem. 